great news, I passed the CIST. So I show up at the testing center, I register, I read the guidelines, right? They do the biometrics. I sit down on my computer, I turn on the computer. Um, the first question pops on the screen and I read it and it's super easy, right? So easy that I know the answer off the top of my head, which is just made me feel really good about myself. And then I continued on, right, with the first 5, 10, 15, 20 questions. And most of them were pretty easy. I, I knew most of the questions off the top of my head. And if not, then it was an easy choice from the multiple choice. And then I get to question 43. And I'm just staring at the screen. I'm just staring at it. Just rereading it and rereading it and then reading the options and just trying to find any hint I can to determine which one's the best answer, right? And it was like that from 43 on. I mean, my exam was a total of 100 questions, okay? So at about 43, about half of it, right? Um, I'm starting to struggle and I'm starting to spend a lot of time in each question. So I have that in the back of my mind. I'm looking at the clock. It's like, okay, I still have some, um, some minutes left. And if you didn't know with the CISP, you can't flag the question and come back to it. Once you press next, that's it. You can't go back. You can only move forward in the exam. So every question was a little bit of a battle. Um, thankfully, every five or maybe seven questions, a question would pop up that I actually recognized that I actually had the answer for, or I could work out the answer with uh, maybe 90% confidence. So, um, but then right back into the valley. Um, so it was an arduous exam, for sure, to say the least. Um, anyone who has taken the CISP, I get, um, I give you Mad props, mad respect. So yeah, my exam ended at 100 questions. To be honest, when I walked out of there, I was really nervous. I wasn't sure if I passed. Actually, I kind of felt like I had failed. Um, and I'm already making plans in my head. Okay, I'm going to take a week off, just relax, start studying again. Um, and I make it to the front desk. And thankfully, with the CISP, they give you the answers, or I guess not the answers. They never gave me the answers. Um, they give me the results and on a piece of paper, and they hand it to me, and I look, and it says, congratulations, you have provisionally passed. So, so yeah, that was um, really satisfying to get. I mean, I studied for months for this exam. It is a huge, huge exam. So... Maybe you're thinking about taking the CISP uh, and you're wondering, well, what did you do to pass? So let me share with you. So the first thing I did was I read this gigantic book that you see on the screen. This is the CISP by Sean Harris and Fernando Maimi. Um, This is the exam guide and it's 1,200 pages long. Can you see it right there? Yep. So here's the book. You can see how thick this puppy is, right? I mean, this is at least like 20 pounds. This is a, a dumbbell. So yeah, I studied, I read through the entire book, okay? I read through the entire thing um, and it took me a little bit because I would stop to just underline, make notes on the sidebars, um, do a lot of YouTubing, Googling terms and, and protocols and things that I didn't know about. Um, because I don't have a technical background. So um, before this, um, I used to work as an IT, I was an IT auditor. So I was an IT audit manager at a Fortune 500 company. And uh, although we dealt with systems, um, the CISSP definitely brings concepts and technologies that I wasn't privy to. So a lot of the material for me was new. And mind you, I have two certifications before the CISSP. I had the CISA, which is the Certified Information Systems Auditor, and the Security Plus. And a lot of people will tell you that the Security Plus, you know, if you pass that exam, then you're pretty much prepared for the CISSP, or not pretty much prepared, but they will tell you that at least half of the exam you have knowledge of. Um, I wouldn't say that. If you have the Security Plus, it's a great place to start. At least you have some foundation. 
but a lot of the knowledge in the CISSP is new. And the way that the Security Plus tests you is different to the CISSP. The Security Plus um, materials are more around the technologies, more around, yeah, the technologies, the protocols, the different types of attacks and vulnerabilities. The CISSP is more centered and focused in the technologies, how do you use them, making decisions, and um, the questions were very much scenario based you're in this scenario what should they do or what should you do um i've heard people talk about you know enter into that information systems security manager mentality i didn't have to do any of that i don't think that um that was even a consideration in answering the questions i think it's pretty the answers are pretty clear with the exception obviously of choosing the best one. But the best one didn't depend on whether you're viewing it from a system administrator's or an engineer's point of view or a manager's point of view. I think that the answer is just the answer, the best answer for that scenario, for that company, right? So yeah, that was the exam. Um, I finished at 100 questions. So it is a CAT exam or a computer assisting testing, right? So the CAT exam, uh, it starts grading you and depending on how well you do or how poorly you do, the difficulty of the questions will go up or down. And, um, and it'll determine right around the 100 question mark, it'll determine whether you know your stuff or you don't know your stuff. So at 100, it could be that you did well or at 100, it could be that you did pretty poorly. So when I walked out of there, um, I thought I had done pretty poorly. I mean, I was I was guessing some questions, and then the time's running out, right? So I'm just I'm just reading through the scenario and just trying to um, guess the best answer possible. And uh, thankfully, um, surprisingly, so I passed. So, so yeah, I'm very happy about that. And if you're thinking and planning about taking the exam, I encourage you to do it. It is a great exam. But I'm going to do another video on the certification, on whether it's worth it or not, and then we're going to look at it from different perspectives. But that's for another video. So um, you're pretty. I'm sure you're wondering, what did you do? How did you prepare? So going back to that, right? So I read this behemoth of a book. It's 1,200 pages long. There's a lot of material, and mind you, there's a lot of material in here that um, they really do add some fluff, but um, it, it's fluff that I felt that was necessary. So I wanted the fluff. Why? Because it gives you a little bit of history. It gives you some stories. And for me, um, just being such a noob in cybersecurity, I want to garner as much information possible. So that was, I welcomed it with open arms. So this is a great book. Um, if you want to study it, now, I'll warn you, it is information overload. It's a ton of information. So this is what happened. I read through the entire thing. I'm like, let me just read through it and get that done with. And I did. So I read through the 1,200 pages. And then the next thing I wanted to do was do the questions at the, eight, at the end of each chapter or domain. So they have eight chapters, which is each domain. Um, every domain is hundreds of pages long, right? So it's a ton of material. So I read through the entire thing and then I went back to chapter one and then I started doing the questions. And, um, you know, one of the things that I noticed is that as I'm doing the questions, I'm guessing a lot of them. Like I don't even know what they're asking me. I'm just guessing. So I didn't want to do the questions just to do the questions. I want the questions to really test me. I want the questions to actually make me recollect and go down, dig into my memory, make sense of it and come up with the answer. At that point in time, I didn't have that. So if you find yourself doing those questions and you just find yourself completely guessing on most of them, then I would suggest you do the same thing as me, which is just stop the questions and review. So what did I do to review it? I definitely did not want to read this behemoth of a book again, right? It's a one-time deal only. So that's when I went to the next book. 
and I read this one. A friend who's a CISP and is a director of cybersecurity at the company I worked at said, hey, get this book. It was super helpful for me. So as soon as he said it, I went, I bought it. And uh, it was. It's very, very helpful. Help, blah, 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 blah. Helpful. So you see, it's a lot thinner. This is about 190 pages long. It's a quick and easy read. No fluff at all. Let me put that one in case you're interested. There you go. It's The 11th Hour by Eric Conrad. Um, and this is the second edition. I think that there's a third one as well, but it's a little different. Um, and it's old. It's a little old. But um, it did the job for me. So what did I do with this one? I read through each chapter. And as I would read a chapter, which most of them... Um, cover almost the entire domain. So I'd read through the chapter and I would write down um, notes and just make an outline, make bullet points and just highlight the most important things and just write them down on my notebook. And that's how I studied this one. And as I would finish one chapter, the next thing that I would do was I went to the CISSP or to the IS, ISC2 website and I downloaded... this exam outline. So this is the most recent as far as I know. Um, but this is the one that I used May 1st, 2021. This is the certification outline. And what this has is just tells you a little bit about the CISSP, et cetera, et cetera. Here you have the length of the exam, three hours, number of items, 100 to 150 um, questions, passing grade 700 out of a thousand, which by the way, in the CISSP, they do not give you the score. They'll just tell you whether you passed or you failed. Nevertheless, this is where I want to get at. So they divide the exam, which is already divided in, in eight domains, right? Or the material in eight domains. And each domain is further divided into subtopics or, or objectives. So for each one of these objectives, let's take this one as, a, as an example, 1.2, understand and apply security concepts. What I did was I prepared a small PowerPoint presentation with bullet points on the information for that. So I would just grab the objective, right? Grab the terms. Okay, they want to they want me to know about confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, non-repudiation. And I just built this. Can you see it? Let me move myself, okay? Okay, so this is what I built based off of what we saw. So confidentiality, add some bullet points, the eyes, right? You don't want them to see. Um, integrity, which is the accuracy of the data, etc. So I built this for every single objective. And um, so what I did was, again, I read through the chapter from this book, The 11th Hour from Eric Conrad. I would read that chapter for that domain. Then I would go to the outline. And then so if I read the chapter for domain one, then I worked through all of these. Okay, I just went through all of these. So 1.1 has a PowerPoint deck, 1.2 has another PowerPoint deck, so on and so forth. And I did one for basically every single one of these. <laughs> now you might say, well, that sounds a little bit like overkill. Um, and it might be, <laughs> it might be. And I'll, quite honestly, it just really depends on where you are, right? So me, Again, right? I don't have a cybersecurity background. I don't have a strong cybersecurity background. I'm pretty much a noob when it comes to IT and cyber. So I really wanted to learn this material. I know that this material is key for the future of my career. So um, I didn't mind spending the additional time to just make sure that I really grasp these concepts and I really grasp the objectives of the exam because as I will mention and review in a 
another video. The exam is a bit expensive, so I definitely didn't want to risk taking the exam, failing it, and then having to take it again and spend the additional, I don't know, $800 or $700. So I definitely didn't want to do that. But um, so I did the decks for every single one of these. Um, and that proved to be very helpful as I'm typing in, I had to think there's, what I was surprised about is that there were certain topics, certain concepts that were in here that I didn't find in the book, um, in either book. Um, and I actually had to just Google them, but as they say, Google's our best friend. So, okay. So I did the 11th hour. I did a PowerPoint slide for each objective. What else did I do, right? So after I finished that, then I went back to the questions. Then I went back and did every single question at the end of each domain for the Sean Harris book, this exam guide right here. And by the way, this is this exact one that I got, which is the eighth edition. Um, they already came out with a ninth, even for the exam version that I took. Um, the real guide is the ninth edition, but I was totally fine with the eighth. So if you're studying to take this and this is the material that you have, you'll be fine. So I did the questions at the end of each domain for this book. Once I was done with that, I had also purchased these two books. This is a, they sell these as a bundle here on Amazon. And one of them is the official study guide. And at the, at the end of each chapter, it also has 20 questions. And then it comes with a practice test book. So let me show you what that looks like. So the bundle has two books. And this is the practice test. I'm trying, I'm trying here. Okay, there you go. Whoop, there you go, there you go. Looking all pretty. Okay, and what this has is just tons of questions. So this has, per domain, it gives you an additional 100 questions to practice. And then at the end, it gives you four different practice tests. This was super helpful. I'm gonna make another video also, just going into more detail on the resources, looking at the costs, looking at different strategies, what you can do, what you what you don't need to do. But in this video, I'm just gonna to stick to what I did. So once I did the questions from this book, the Sean Harris's book, right at the at the end of each domain, I did all of the questions. Then I moved to the Cybex books, which are these. Cybex is the publisher. So I did the questions at the end of the official study guide. And then I moved on to the 100 questions per chapter. And then I was doing those. Um, once I got done with those, what I did was both of these, the Cybex products and the Sean Harris book, they both come with an online suite. So you have an online test bank. I'm pretty sure the questions are the same, but what's cool about the test banks obviously is that you can tell them how many questions you want, uh, you wanna take and how much time. Um, you can tell them if you want them to give you the, the answer right away or just take it as a test, et cetera, et cetera. And it's online, right? So you don't have to be flipping to the back of the book and read and then go back. Well, we're where am I, et cetera, and then they'll score it for you as well. So all of that is convenient. So once I went through the books, I started doing the online ones. And um, once I started doing the online ones, then um, that's what I did for the last few weeks leading to the exam. So maybe four to six weeks leading to the exam, I was just doing the online questions and going over and over through them. And that proved to be a challenge for me because I was ranging between, I don't know, 70, 70 and 80, 
right? Sometimes 65, sometimes 90. Um, but I was heavy in the 70s and I wasn't comfortable. I wanted to get into the high 80s, um, maybe even into the low 90s before taking the exam. But um, I'm going to put up here um, the scores. So I was writing down and keeping record of each time I would do the questions, how many questions I did, um, how many I got right, how many I got wrong, the score, and um, and how I progressed through the days and through the weeks. And as you can see in the screen, I'm between the 70s and the 70s and, and kind of in the 80s, even the week leading to the exam. So I actually never got to, I never got to the 90s that I really wanted to. Another thing, right, they give you four practice tests. I didn't actually get to do the fourth one, um, but I did three of them, and you'll notice that all three of them I scored in the mid-70s. I think it's like 75, 75, and then 78. So I was a little bit nervous going into the exam, but I share this with you because Maybe this is your situation. Maybe you're about to take the exam. You're already registered. You don't have much time left. You don't want to reschedule it. Or maybe you're pondering on whether you should or shouldn't reschedule because of your grades on the question banks or on the practice tests. My friend, if you are getting you know, 75 and up in your practice tests, I think you're good to go. And the reason I say that is because that's what I was getting in mind. And... um and I did all right. I mean, you're going to struggle in the exam, at least for the second half of the exam. But, um, but you'll pass. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm rooting for you. Let me just encourage you, if you're taking the CISSP, you got this. Um, go ahead, take it, kick its butt. Um, the day of the exam, just get there 30 minutes earlier. Um, don't try to cram anything the day of or the day before. By that by that time, you either know it or you don't, and um, but I'm pretty sure you do know it. So just go in, relaxed, and kick some butt. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, awesome. Best of luck to you and your CISSP exam. Go kill it. And I'm going to make a couple of other videos. So in the next video, I'm going to go over the resources that we just talked about, but I'm going to go deeper into them and just um, tell you my thoughts. I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the actual books, on um, which book would I read, would I study from the Sean Harris again, or would I not study? Um, would I get the 11th hour? Is it worth it? Um, would I get this bundle or not get the bundle? Which online application that I like better? The test banks, are they comparable? Should you get both of them? Do you need the, I don't know, maybe another test bank? So I'm going to answer all of those questions in the next video, and then I'm going to do another video talking about the CISSP cert. Is it worth it? And we're going to look at cost. We're going to look at job demand. We're going to look at the material that it covers and see if it makes sense for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.